Hey everyone, welcome to Speak Up Monday. A uh, big shout out to our live audience here. Um, we really appreciate you coming out and what looks like it might be rain coming. So we, we're we glad you got here dry. You're going to get wet on the way home. Um, special thank, thank, uh, thanks to everyone who's visiting us online. I think we're all across YouTube, Facebook, and a few others. So hello to all those who couldn't make it here tonight. We hope that you stick around with us and enjoy. Uh, so I'm my name is Michael. I'm the host of this evening. And so a special thanks to Rob, who is our traditional custodian of this space, um, and he's been able to, to allocate our monthly section to the blockchain ecosystem. So before I explain the stars of the show, just to introduce myself, my name is Michael Benalik. I am the co-founder of Republic Repair, as you can see on my t-shirt. Republic Repair is Indonesia's largest crypto media outlet, education and media outlet. And so we'll talk a little bit more, a little bit about the things which we do um, as we go along this evening. But we'll go across our panel and we'll let everyone introduce themselves, say where they're from and say something that something amazing that they've done in the last week. And, um, and then we'll come back and we'll give a little bit of an outline about what we're going to do for this evening's panel. Okay. Uh, hello, guys. So uh, my name, my full name is Igede Putu Rahman Deshanta. So it's quite long. So just call me Anta. I'm the CEO of Baliola and the coordinator of Bali Blockchain Centers. It was short. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel. I'm from Hungary. Me and my friend, Six, we came to Bali in early January to create a Polkadot hub in Bali, which we are going to talk about a bit later on. I have a business development background. Uh, me and my friends at home in Budapest, we operate a pizzeria. Uh, in the downtown and also collaborated with uh, other businesses to create franchises. Uh, I got involved in crypto and in blockchain in 2020 and uh, I'm really happy to be here to speak about blockchain. Thank you. Hi everyone. I got involved uh, with Bitcoin first in 2013 uh, in a very fun period. And since then, I love the idea of decentralization, on-chain governance, and everything that is going around the space. So uh, that's how I became a Polkadot uh, head ambassador for the Eastern European region. Even though I'm a bit far from that region now, we are here with the quest to get the, the first physical uh, Polkadot uh, hub running. So we are working on the concept, and you will hear more about this. My background is uh, security in IT, mostly in Web2, then I transited to Web3, and, uh, and that's my uh, secondary business uh, to do audits and, uh, and also helping development of uh, different projects and do some consultation when it's needed and when my time allows. Awesome. Well, you know who we have here this evening. So I think we're going to go into all of their individual roles a little bit more specifically. But just to map out so you all don't fall asleep or leave early, we're going to give you the agenda of what we're going to do tonight ahead of time. So we'll go into a little bit more detail in all of the different projects that everyone's working on. And then as our second phase, we'll talk more a little bit about the current state of the ecosystem generally, as what's happening in the market, what's happening in Indonesia, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some alpha leaks and some huge events that are coming this year from everyone sitting on this panel. And then we'll close it out in the fourth quarter with um, some questions from the audience. So if everyone wants to think of something that you want to ask, well, you'll get a chance at the end from someone here. So there is some method to the madness here this evening. Everybody's here because we are connected, almost like blocks in a blockchain. Um, we all have our own things which we're working on, but we're working on things collaboratively. And so it's going to involve everybody here as well. And so we wanted to give everybody a bit of an insight into what's actually happening here. Um, I'm actually going to come back to myself and I'll, come, I'll start with Anta first because I think he's the star of the show this evening. Now, Anta plays this, I've known Anta for a while now, and he plays this down a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to be your hype man, okay? Yes. So... Correct me if I'm wrong here. Yeah. Anta was won a contract or won a tender, his company did, with the Dempasar government. For those who are new here, Dempasar is the capital city of Bali, which is a province of Indonesia. So 
he won a contract with the Denpasar government or a division of the Denpasar government called Buckruff yep. to make blockchain the second biggest industry in Bali after tourism. Clearly, tourism is number one here. So he's been given this charge to make a whole new industry from scratch, essentially, and make this like a mecca for the region. Now, this is humongous because not only does this show that there's a whole industry that's based around um, technology and the adoption of the forward thinkingness of um, the place in which we all live, but it also goes to show that there's a willingness and that there's a desire to collaborate with not just foreigners, but to build a whole new industry um, for locals as well. So I'll let you explain a little bit more about what you're doing, and you can correct anything that I've said yeah. that was incorrect. Yeah. Um, and you can maybe explain some about some of the products and things which you've already done and the achievements that you've already achieved. Indeed. Thank you, Michael. So, yeah, you're always my hot guy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, we are, Bali Blockchain Center is forming, uh, it's like a collaboration between the Denpasar government and uh, also with Baliola, my company, and uh, the foundation of Capen Foundation. So. The focus of Bali Blockchain Center is to creating a new ecosystems, a new ecosystem, a blockchain ecosystems that can be safe for society, to people. Because you know, blockchain currently that sometimes is, Sunday is in the middle of a hill, sometimes is in a good road, sometimes it's not. So, uh, Bali Blockchain Center is trying to creating this eco uh, safe ecosystem and like combining the global uh, global community and also with the local community of blockchain. So this is what we are doing. And uh, with, we are forming in 2021, in October 2021. In the first years, our job is to like establish ourselves, introducing ourselves to every single community, and also uh, like trying to introduce Bali blockchain centers. And uh, we already did it well. Uh, we got a lot of communities already uh, have a dis uh, Com uh, have a collaboration with, for example, like Michael for Ruby Group Yard is already in Bali Blockchain Centers, and uh, there's a lot of ecosystems also joining Bali Blockchain Centers. And uh, for helping successing what we are, uh, what, what is my, our job, the government bless us with a really big facility, a very huge facility in the centers of Denpasar. It's a very big building, uh, two story building with a lot of room, a lot of meeting rooms, a lot of discussion room, even a movie theaters inside. And then we have a, like, a big auditorium with 500 people inside and also a support from the government. But because it is a government building, there is a lot of term and condition to follow. So uh, we are trying this one year to like want to simple, uh, simplify the term and condition. So uh, people or all of you, the community of blockchain can, can like blending with our local community in our building. So this is uh, what we are doing. And also the last years, uh, like two, last two years, we are creating my project. In one side, I am a coordinator of Bali Blockchain Centers. But another side, uh, I am the CEO of Baliola. We are the NFT marketplace. We are uh, NFTs, uh, like NFT transformation company. We're trying to like transform a Web2 company to Web3 company. We have a lot of uh, platform. For example, we have marketplace, NFT marketplace, focused on artwork. And we are helping 127 artists already. And then uh, we have a Baliola uh, smart contract generator. So if you don't have a knowledge with developers, you just go to the website and trying to create your own uh, smart contract. And then we also have a decentralized wallet. So this is what we are doing. And uh, because of what we are doing, uh, we have agreement also with the Ministry of Law to trying to discussion how to uh, integrate the uh, copyright certification in Indonesia to using NFTs. And then uh, we also have an agreement uh, with some of the, you know, like state company, state company or Indonesian company that have, uh, what do you call it, like agreement to use blockchain in some of their areas. So this is what we are doing. And we are trying to still to continue what we are doing now. And uh, this second years, uh, basically this morning I have a meeting 
with the government uh, committee. And uh, this morning, yeah, there is a there is a lot of uh, happening in this morning. And uh, the one thing that we now I understand about the government, because of our successful on the first years, in the second years, they ask us to activate all of the activity of the community. So Bali Blockchain Center is now is ready to supporting all of the community to creating an event there or creating the uh, like uh, even in community uh, seminars and everything in our building. So this is for me. So there's a few key points there. For those that don't know, <coughs> you can pull out your phone and you can Google DNA building in Dempasar, there'll be huge amounts of photos. Dharma Negara Alaya. So if you can uh, search on your phone, Dharma is D-H-A-R-I-M-I. Negara is N-E-G-A-R-A. -R, and Alaya, A-L-A-Y-A. -A. It you comes up see. as DNA building. Yeah, It'll it's come DNA up. building. Yeah. DNA building, we'll see. Yeah. So it's an incredible space. It's, and it shows that the commitment of the Dempasar government that they've allocated this space to Anta to create an industry. And when you listen to the words that he's saying, again, he's a humble man, but when you listen to the words of agreements, um, partnerships, government, ministry of law, what other buzzwords that I hear in there? So there's huge collaboration available here for anyone who wants to come and build in this space. And I'll come back to this point in a minute, but I want to labor it just right now, is that so many times we have people who come to this beautiful island and it's their land of opportunity. It's a land of susu and maru, milk and honey. And you can come here and you can think, I'm going to build my project and I'm going to I'm going to thrive in a beautiful space like Tropical Nomad with all of these great facilities here. And you forget that there's a local population here. And you forget that there's a local industry here. And this right here is your portal and your gateway into the local industry, the local community, the local um, government, essentially. So... Um, the door is open. So if you're, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a project and you want to work in this sector, anything to do with this sector, um, the red carpet has been rolled out for you. So we just want to stress that point. Um, this transitions beautifully onto our next section because both of the boys here from Polkadot, um, they are individuals. They don't just come as a package. They are individuals and have individual skill sets as well. <laughs> So I'll let them both individually explain who they are and what they do within Polkadot. But first, maybe I don't know who would m like to do this more, but could you just explain a little bit what Polkadot is for those who are, just briefly, because I know we've got some people here who understand blockchain, but hands up if you would consider yourself a novice. Who doesn't really quite understand blockchain? Okay. <laughs> blockchain, the easiest way to understand, the easiest way to understand, and I'll let them explain Polkadot, is it is a decentralized way of running computers. So normally you would have Amazon Web Services that would house all of the websites of the internet in one building. Would hold, sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. You would have Amazon Web Services which would hold all of the internet and all of the websites in one building on their servers. What a blockchain is, is it allows pe people and individuals all over the world to connect their personal computers together to create one super network. And so the first iteration of this was Bitcoin. And through all of these individual computers, we were able to create a decentralized version of money. Now, this was then involved with Ethereum, where people could now build things on top of Ethereum. They could build apps on top of this decentralized network of computers. Now, because it is decentralized, it is now not under the purview of one particular regulatory body. It's not being controlled by one particular government but it's decentralized in nature. So we have a decentralized internet. Now this has been very raw and very like clunky for many years while it's starting to be built out, but Polkadot, I guess, is that third iteration, and I'll let the boys explain. Thank you very much. So I think this pretty well summarized uh, what was happening in the last uh, nearly 15 years since Bitcoin started, and of course, when there is a new technology and uh, new, uh, new projects are coming out, there are always some issues and some limitations. And, and that's how Polkadot was born, because Ethereum was uh, really innovative when it uh, started. But the developers uh, already saw the limitations after the first year. 
and some of the guys from the Ethereum team uh, started uh, to work on uh, on Substrate and Polkadot. Uh, Gavin Wood and uh, Robert Habermeyer, uh, the the masterminds behind the the project, and and they wanted to solve a very big issue because we have we already had like many blockchains separate networks they they were not able to communicate with each other so you can imagine it like you have banks but banks cannot transfer money to each other that's a very big problem so so that's how polkadot was born to solve this issue uh, in interoperability so the core concept is if you use the blockchain uh, on top of substrate substrate is name of the technology which, uh, which fuels Polkadot and many other blockchains, it is built in a way that you can talk to other blockchains and transfer assets between them. And, and this is uh, in layer zero. This is the lowest layer in the system. You do not need centralized bridges, hex, patches, and so on. Because whenever it comes to cross-chain solutions and, uh, and solutions to transfer assets between chains, most of the time, this is a very strongly centralized system. And if you want to know how secure this is, then I recommend uh, you to look into Web3 bridge hacking. You will find some interesting videos in, uh, in YouTube and, and see some very interesting cases. So, so this needs to be a stable and secure technology. And Polkadot already brings working solutions um, in, this, in this part of blockchain. And this is what also uh, can potentially help governments to, to build uh, a system of blockchains where in case of multiple countries uh, or parts of the country itself want to communicate with each other with their own blockchain, then there is a way, there is a protocol. They can use uh, XCMP. If you, if you want to look into more technical details and look into XCMP uh, messaging protocol, this is, this is what is now used in, uh, in Polkadot, which is a message format. So you already have uh, something which you can use to, to make sure if I'm sending from my blockchain an asset to another blockchain, then this is how it should be working. It's, it's basically a standard. This is not in, in mass adoption yet, but as we see, uh, and as the, po as, as the blockchain uh, space is growing, uh, what, what my experience is is that, that there are more and more people interested and we are getting to a phase where hopefully mass adoption is coming. We can see governments being interested. We can see more and more people and companies starting their own blockchain projects, having their blockchain specialist teams, though many of them are not really speaking about. but. All the clients I had, uh, especially Web2 clients, they are secretly uh, talking about it and, and building something. So I think that's a, that's a pretty interesting area to be in. And there is a lot of potential here uh, in Bali. Because one of the reasons we came here, that's what you wanted to say, right? No, I was actually just, I I just going to hit on that one point. So if Ethereum was a blockchain, a network of computers, what Polkadot is, is a network of networks. So it's like that next level. So what Ethereum's limitation was is that it couldn't scale beyond a certain size where Polkadot figured out how to create individual blockchains which are networks of computers and then network them together. So like a patchwork quilt of networks. Now what this does is this allows the internet to scale like a big fishing net across the earth and everyone's personal computer can play a role in that. So Polkadot was like that third iteration. That's what I want to say. Now, what are you doing in Bali? <laughs> yeah, so last summer I uh, traveled around this region and uh, I spent one and a half week here in Bali. And one of the first thing I do when I travel a new location, I check out the Web3 community, what's going on on crypto, who's there and so on. And I saw that there are many super cool people, many developers, but there are no, uh, no events, no community uh, actually utilized here and there is so much talent and so much potential but where are the people who are organizing some events or, or where is the place where people can at least gather so uh, with a couple of ambassadors we we came together and we were thinking hmm, it would be really interesting to to have a physical location and to bring those people together all the talents all these cool people and uh, and then I left Bali 
and I was really surprised because I just saw that that people were just coming to the Telegram group we created and there were more and more interest and I was like, oh wow, there's so much potential. We're not doing anything and it's just coming up and people are, hey, when is it starting? What is that? How it works and so on. And, and we came back and then we met Michael uh, and, and we started to talk. He told us about Blockchain Bali Center we were like, oh, that's interesting. There is something, it's, it's not yet activated, as Anta was saying. And we were like, okay, there, there could be a really interesting synergy there. Because what we want to do with the Polkadot hubs and, and what Polkadot is doing and what, what we are good in in the Polkadot is, is also the community. So interoperability and, and the tech is very important, but you have a dead system without people and the community, right? So Polkadot focuses on a lot in community and activating them and in short, that's the story, story uh, how we found each other. Beautiful. Do you want to add anything at all, Gabor? Maybe talk a little bit more about the space that you're looking to create? Uh, I just want to uh, highlight that, uh, that one thing which we, I think we missed, and it's really amazed me when we, when we got here, that, uh, so we, we talked about blockchain. Some of you already know what is blockchain, but I think, uh, if I will ask that, how many of you have some cryptocurrencies maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. More, more hands in the air. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so it, it was, it was uh, really amazing that in Europe, there's, there's a big culture about this, this uh, crypto thing with, with shilling coins, you know, and everybody's talking about the, the tokens, bitcoins, and stuff like that, and, and not much about the technology itself and, and why is it good. And we came to Bali, and it was so surprisingly overwhelming that, that here nobody speaks about the tokens, the coins, and, and to get rich immediately, and 100x, and and uh, s uh, some other stuffs and it was really it it it's so amazing that uh, Anta uh, focusing on on the real purpose of blockchain and smart contracts to to create a better life for the Indonesian uh, people and uh, how they can uh, implement in their everyday everyday lives in a positive way. So I think that's that's a huge accomplishment so far. We're lucky, aren't we? Um, for those that have just arrived, and we need some more seats in the, in the house, we might be able to squeeze a few more people over here. For those that are looking online, there's like 300 people here. It's packed. Um, <laughs> so you're missing out. I think it's 400. 400, okay. So I guess I just wanted to highlight this point as well. Polkadot as a project is humongous as well. So the market cap of Polkadot, I think, is in the billions of, what, six billion? Yep, depends on the price. Depends yeah. on the hour. <laughs> depends on the hour. But a multi-billion dollar project. And the fact that we've got the head of Eastern Europe... Ambassador. Ambassador <laughs> yes, I was looking for the word. Um, that is out here and is looking to expand. Um, it just goes to show the attention that Bali has as well in this space now as well. Yeah, a little bit about uh, the ambassador thing in Polka, that because it might not be clear what this thing is. Um, that uh, We have a Polkadot ambassador program. This is uh, an open program for everyone who want to contribute to the Polkadot ecosystem or uh, want to be useful in the blockchain world. Anyone can become a Polkadot candidate if, uh, if you have uh, at least a minimal skills and understanding and open to uh, create content, uh, do community moderation, organize meetups, event, and so on. There are many, many things you can do, or translation. It would be really cool if we have some uh, local ambassadors in Indonesia who, who take care of the translations. Maybe some from, from uh, Republic Rupia. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, um, so this is an open program. The idea is that everyone is a volunteer in the Polkadot Ambassador program, and, and you get access to a lot of uh, knowledge, uh, a very strong network, because as time passes and as, as you uh, get through the ambassador candidate status and you become a full-pledged ambassador, that's the first three months. Uh, if you are contributing and you can prove your contribution to a head ambassador, then then you get a so valuable uh, access to the network and knowledge on how to uh, 
activate communities, how to uh, work with on-chain governance. And here's the thing that, that it's, it's not yet there. There are only a couple of projects like Polkadot is using that on-chain governance. Our community is governed through treasury, child bounties, and systems that are running from the blockchain itself. If you learn this now and you, you know how it works, then I think it will be a big uh, advantage in the future because it's like buying domain names in the end of 90s at the right time. Because people who know, oh, that's a thing, that's very interesting. That's what, what this on-chain governance might be in a couple of years when uh, governments and, and big companies start to uh, utilize it more and more. Amazing. And I think this is the most exciting thing about it is that we have the attention of really high quality projects because I think up until now, we've had a lot of people building in this space, but it's like, how do we get these projects off the island out of Indonesia? And so the fact that we potentially now have support, not just from international blockchain networks and foundations, but also from governmental support, it's why we're all here. Um, are we ready to start announcing some exciting announcements? Yeah. I know one person's excited. One person, about 300 that are here. Are we excited? 200%. Yeah. yeah. Are we excited? Yeah. All right, that is awesome. Okay, firstly, the first thing, I believe that Polkadot is opening up a hub inside the Bali Blockchain Center. Did you want to maybe talk about that at all, Gabor? Or? Yeah, I think I let the six talk about it. Okay, we'll let six talk about it. You can summarize it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so as, as we mentioned, there is this idea to create Polkadot hubs all around the world, not just physical ones, but also online ones. Because last year when we came out with the idea, uh, it turned out a Parity is a company which is building a substrate or the main company building it. It's, it's getting decentralized. It's a good thing. So, so there are some other projects who were thinking about the same thing and said, oh, we need some locations, either uh, physical or online. So now we have a collection of Polkadot Hub initiatives, but the first one, thanks to Blockchain Bali Center and also thanks to Michael who introduced us, um, now we have the, the chance to make it real and start the actual physical first location uh, starting here in uh, Bali. So what we are working on now is the concept itself. This is right now uh, an initiative, an experiment. We are working on the guidelines uh, to, to, to create uh, so other people all around the world can run their own hubs where people can come together, uh, learn, educate uh, each other, build projects and find the talents. The concept and the, and the idea was uh, actually coming from hacker spaces because surprisingly, I was not expecting that growth, but, but a couple of years ago, there were only a few hundred hacker spaces all around the world. What is a hacker space? It's a physical location where hackers come together to, to do some uh, tinkering, uh, coding, electronics, 3D printing, this kind of stuff. This, this concept is, uh, is uh, basically an autonomous uh, physical location where people just enjoy their time together. Most of the times, these are like super skilled individuals, like, like really good hackers, especially uh, in the famous hacker spaces. Uh, so the, the amount of them just grew. There are like 800 nearly in the world, and it works. They are active hacker spaces. There are more than 2,000 registered. 800 are, is the number that, that is active. So we were like, OK, I was a member in the hacker, Hungarian uh, hacker space for a long time. I'm still semi-active, let's say, but, but not that active anymore because I'm, uh, I'm working on the hub concept. So we're thinking, OK, that's really cool. Those people are not working together, but the model is working because it's growing, it's autonomous, it's sustainable. So, so that's a good thing. Let's see how we can use this model in a different way and utilize it for the Polkadot community and, and do something. And, and that's how we got there. And that, that's, that's the kind of guideline we want to create, how you run your own Polkadot hub uh, and, and, uh, and your own community where, where you can create your blockchain uh, future and ideas and have a good time, not just coding, but also community and social events. Because that's a combination where, where people come together, not just for you know the tech, 
but also for, for having a good talk about Web3 and what's going on and enjoying time. Actually, the whole hackerspace idea came, uh, came into uh, a thing because hackers, you know, are very introverted people, so they don't really go out, but they still feel like I need some people to talk to in real life, so you cannot be like totally, you know, disconnected. And now I'm talking about the, the white uh, hat hacker guys, not, not, the, not the evil guys, but the good guys. So they created the, the hackerspace uh, concept somewhere in the 90s. And, and that's how this highly skilled people started to come together and you know, the phenomenon just started. And now we see a new potential iteration of that in a very more interesting way. So essentially we'll have a, a physical space where if you have a project, you can come in, you can receive support, they can talk you through the process of getting a grant, you can get plugged into that ecosystem, you can meet people, It'd be all of the parts which you don't have when you've got some sort of project which you're trying to get off the ground. So we've got structural support, which is amazing, and it's housed in the Bali Blockchain Center. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this really great uh, idea to having one of the biggest uh, ecosystems is Bali Blockchain Centers, but we are open for all the ecosystems. One thing that we understand is Bali Blockchain Centers has uh, four jobs. First is as uh, the centers of information for locals. Uh, the second one is as the centers of education of blockchain. The, ter uh, the third one is the centers of uh, incubation for the project. And the last one is centers of community. So uh, for centers of information, we also we 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 already starting a communication and discussion a lot with Republic Rupiah and now supporting us to giving the information, the right information to the locals. And also the one thing that we love about Republic Rupiah is because they're using Bahasa Indonesia. So that's why it's really really uh, easy to go to the university and then introducing blockchain and then uh, we have a discussion in, in, in Bahasa Indonesia. This is the first step. And then the second one is we're creating also the, the curriculums, a program that call Bali Blockchain Academy that we will launch nearly with Republic Rupia also. And also we have a supporting from the Polkadot and Substrate. Uh, so we will like creating a new developers, a local talent or maybe like not only local, so everyone around the world that can come here and learn about uh, blockchain and with a lot of luxurious because you will learn blockchain in the bit site. I think this is very luxurious. So this is what we are doing to do, are going to do. And then we also have a like with the uh, ecosystem like Polkadot, we have uh, incubation also. And yeah, there's a lot of things happening. So this is what we are saying that um, yeah, it's, it's great to have a, a great ecosystem because what we are doing is we want to create a safe ecosystem of blockchain so everyone can tap in. This is very important. We also uh, did on discussion now with, with a Pentahelix. You know, the Pentahelix is A, B, C, G, and uh, so it's, it's academic. We are discussion with a lot of university now, with the 13 university, with already MOUs with uh, how to create like discussion, how to create a good uh, ecosystem of blockchain. It's a B with the business, with a lot of uh, business, for example, like Polkadot, and there is a uh, Rubik Rupia, and a lot of uh, exchange. And then uh, the G1, FEG the government, we have a great connection with government. We discuss a lot, and we are now we so are we are helping to create the models for understanding blockchain for finance. We are trying to introduce into government because the government already uh, launched the project Garuda. This is the CBDC project that based on blockchain. It's Indonesia has its own government yeah. coin coming. It's, yeah, it's Indonesia. Uh, we are having that. And then uh, we are also the community, like this one. We, we are discussing a lot with the community and, and society. This is a very good uh, combination. This is Pentahelix. That is what we are going to do. And we are trying to create like uh, an ethics uh, in, uh, in Indonesia, Indonesia blockchain standard, how to creating a great ecosystem, good project, so everyone can be like focused on the how we implement the technology. It's not only about uh, trading a token or like selling a token or like just want to market making like that. So we are focused on how we implement this blockchain technology to every single aspect of every single use case, like in government, education, and everything. So I might just hit on that point, and this is the last point before we open up uh, for some question time. So Republic Rupia, if I can indulge a little bit, um, 
we started just over two years ago because we felt, well, probably a bit longer than that now, because we realized that there was a gap in the market here in Indonesia. There was a lot of um, adoption, but there wasn't a lot of good information about blockchain, about different crypto tokens, about what is this, what is that. And so my co-founder and I, David, who is a local Indonesian, we started creating content in Indonesian. And we started on YouTube. We just started making videos. And it boom, blew off. Um, it took off. Within less than a year, we had more than 100,000 followers on YouTube. Um, and then now our community is big, much bigger than a quarter of a million across all of our social media platforms. Um, even now, in the middle of the bear market, we have more than 45,000 monthly active users still now in the middle of the bear market. And to this point now, we are the biggest blockchain crypto ecosystem community in the country. And it's all of our content is done in Bahasa, Indonesia. And our team has grown. We have a really busy website. We've produced now, probably for the last year and a half, more than 30 pieces of content a week. And that's not just video content, but written content, research about different projects, what you should avoid, what you should look out for, what's upcoming, what's the next trend. And so we've got this huge supply of, um, of information which we've been providing to the Indonesian community. And so the thing that we've struggled with is being able to activate that community and be able to get the attention internationally, say, hey, we've got a captive audience here, and being able to plug them into the Bali blockchain ecosystem. So this is where we have some announcements. So we've figured out that the thing that we need to be able to do to bridge the gap between local Indonesians and the international community is that we need our community to be more than just Bahasa Indonesia. So all of this backlog of information that we've done over the last two years, we're about to turn on the fire hose and just spray it all over the internet um, in multiple languages. Obviously starting in English. Um, clap, clap, clap. But we plan on going as many different languages as we can. So we've earmarked, we're going to Tagalog, possibly Arabic. We'll see what other comes up. Um, and I think the idea behind this is that we want Republic Rupia to be more than just the Rupia part, which is Indonesia, but to be international, which is why we've formed Republic DAO. So we now become an international community where all of our content and all of our platform will be available to all people across the world. And so that internationally, we can plug in the Indonesian community with foreign support and foreign partners but also with foreign people who want to come into Indonesia, we were the one-stop shop between the, the Republic DAO, which will also be housed at the Bali Blockchain Center, and that any foreign company or developer or investor or media outlet or wherever it might be can come in and they instantly are plugged in to more than a quarter of a million Indonesians. So this is the first time we've spoken about this publicly, um, and so you're going to hear this ad nauseum for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, but the idea is, is that we have an official launch, which we're going to do. Yes. Do you want to talk about the official launch? Uh, we will wait. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll give you a little teaser. Just a little teaser. So we do have an NFT collection, which will go out. And this NFT collection is not just a boring piece of art, but it's actually going to be a proper custom-made artwork by a local Balinese artist. You're one of the senior artists. This is a very, very great and a really unique uh, art. And this artist is already supporting us for like two years. And um, we are changing his life. Starting from the artwork, it's only pay for like $5, one artwork. And uh, when they go to NFTs and we supporting them, they already get like $100, $100, yeah, almost $1,000 because of going to NFTs. But even though the NFT is quite go low, uh, we're trying to create the the artwork is really unique, mm. and it's not only about uh, only about NFT, but you owning the art. Mm. So we'll have 1,000 unique art pieces that will be available. Now, it's not just a memento. It's not just a thing that you can hold on to. This is actually a ticket into the ecosystem. So anyone who holds one of these NFTs has the ability, whether you're an investor or a project or a media outlet or wherever it might be, you'll be able to come in, you'll be able to sign up to a code of ethics with the Bali Blockchain Center, get that official stamp from the Bali Blockchain Center, and it will be a, an, an ecosystem. 
So when any project like Polkadot comes along and says, hey, we want access to the ecosystem, boom, we'll airdrop you. A thousand people who hold these NFTs will be getting rained airdrops from projects that are wanting to try and get access to, to the Indonesian ecosystem. It will also be a ticket to a conference which we're going to be holding, the Indonesian crypto ecosystem. And while you hold that, that'll get you access to tickets. There will also be a closed ecosystem community group where people can collaborate inside this ecosystem. So if you're one of the thousand holders, you'll be able to communicate with each other. And there was one more which I'll talk about later. Um, but the idea is that not only does it support individuals, because the one problem that we've had with Republic Repair is that we wanted to be able to support local projects, local Indonesians who are wanting to get a, a project off the ground, but have struggled to be able to get adoption. And we only have very limited space that we can promote other projects as well. So now, if someone is an Indonesian developer or entrepreneur from Denpasar or Sanur or Singaraja, and they come to Republic Repair or the Bali Blockchain Center and say, I need promotion. I need people to know about what I'm building. We can say, awesome. Let's airdrop your project to at least 1,000 holders and they now have access to one of the, like 1,000 of the most influential people in the Indonesian ecosystem. Instantly 1,000 users. Yes and they have the support of the Bali Blockchain Center as well. So this is our way that we're gonna be able to plug Indonesian projects and international projects into the ecosystem that we already have, while also giving you access to the backlog of research that Republic Repair has been doing over the last two years. Close scene. So that's what's coming. Did I miss anything? No, no. Okay. We're also going to get Polkadot support on this. So they're going to be c collaborating on this in, in a lot of different ways. Before we turn over to questions, is there anything else anyone on the panel wants to say? I think you already... <laughs> yeah. Spot on. yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> So we've only got one mic between the 300 people here. I've got that joke three times now, so I got, I got the most out of it. Don't stop. Where's your like laughter button? I know that comes up on the post So um, yeah, we'll throw it to the crowd if you've got any. Okay, we're passing over to the to the big boss. All right. So um, first, I just want to say, fantastic. Um, what a great evening, and uh, thank you to all of you for for giving freely. And I'm um, sharing some incredible news, right? Which I'm sure everybody here... N now I realize, Anta, why you wanted to catch up. <laughs> I, I didn't realize there was this. You should have told me more. A man of few words. Too few. <laughs> so the, the quick question um, that I have to each of you, which hopefully won't take too long, is like we can all see, right, each of you has your own energy, your own vibe, your own like beauty, inner beauty, right? And obviously we're talking about blockchain, which you know, um, has, a, has, let's say, a very strong social impact to it, right? So then my question is, is that, you know, why did you do this? Why did you choose to do what you're doing now? And that question, hopefully a short one, uh, is to each of you, and then we give it microphone back to anybody else who wants to ask some more technical questions. Wow, the big question, why? It's <laughs> easy question, but difficult answer. Um, the one thing that why, um, you know, there is a lot of happening. I think I already explained it like quite a lot. Every every time when we have an event, I always uh, discussing about this. We are seeing that Bali is only about uh, tourism, right? And then pandemic is hit. And then after that, there is a new ecosystem is coming, happening in Changu. There is most of them is di uh, digital nomad, and then most of them is from crypto space, crypto blockchain, and like Web3, a lot of that. So we are seeing that maybe it's time to like shifting our concept of tourism. It's not about only about tourism is luxurious only, but how how we can like benefit it not only uh, the 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 global community but also in the local. So we need to be. Uh, we are really eager to understand more about blockchain, uh, more about the big industry. Because mainly, if you talk about Bali, it's only about tourism. We did talk about Indonesia, uh, where is the IT guys, IT everything. It's in Jakarta, it's Bandung, Surabaya, Jogja. But one thing they don't understand, 
to the global community of IT is in Bali also. So this is the one thing that's not be highlighted. Uh, this is the main thing that why uh, we, I, I, we are trying to create highlight this kind of thing. But in my personal thing, uh, I want to give something to Bali as my, like, uh, you know, my kid is here. I live here. I, I born here, and I want to give something to Bali. I want to create it uh, to like giving impact for uh, even though that it's a small thing, but as as long as I believe the small thing can be getting bigger, because one thing that I believe is the ripple effects. The ripple effects is happening. Only a small thing that can be a ripple a lot. So this is what. I want to make. I just want to make a small ripple and let the community just make it bigger. So there's it. So per personal one, right? So, so why yeah. is it that, that, that you were attracted to the, not polka dot, for, but yeah, why yeah. did you get in the whole space in general? Yeah, I mean, for my, my point of view is the technology, uh, absolutely. So I was really fascinated when I realized the power of blockchain and smart contracts and how this will revolutionize our everyday life probably in the future it's like that huge that when the internet is like in the 90s so i i think it's it's uh, it's one of the kind one of a kind and we haven't had this kind of thing in our lives so far that we not trust a middleman for example a bank or or a tourist agent or somebody we trust technology even if we don't know each other, then there's the proof that we can transfer wealth, we can transfer information, and uh, all of those kinds of stuff we haven't even managed, uh, imagined yet. So I think that's, that's pretty huge. And uh, that's my main reason. And, and the rest is, is comes with along with this. So <laughs> yeah, probably. I was always a curious type of person coming from a small village and going through all the steps of uh, working in some enterprise companies and and doing uh, information security seeing what's going on uh, in, in mostly in Europe uh, figuring out how to start my own uh, businesses and so on but somehow things were not really uh, working the way I wanted and, and there were some pieces always missing uh, and I'm a curious type, so I want to know how things work and how things can uh, be made better. And, and that's how I transited fully to Web3, blockchain, crypto, whatever you call this phenomenon that is just going on now. Um, so, so I found this space which is very different from others in a way that you put effort into it and it comes back to you and says, thank you, here is a lot of resource, so keep going on and do this. When I tried doing this uh, for, for many other, mm, let's say, industries, whatever, yeah, you get a salary increase, you get a thank you, you get a whatever, but in this space I got way more than, uh, than you just, hey, good job, you did, did your work. I got a, an awesome community and friends and people who you can work together with. So that's, that's why I'm here uh, and that's why I think this is how the future should look like, not the exploited Web2 way where like giant companies are uh, screwing up the whole space, taking all your data and you have zero privacy and, and, and you don't own anything. I think people should uh, have control over their wallets, for example, which blockchain is the core concept. You, you control your own wallet, your own assets. And, and also transparency and, and what just Gabo explains, that, that people can't just cheat money and create fake money. There is a blockchain and you see all the transactions and everything is transparent. You don't create fake money here. And I just really like this idea that, that the system has potential for more uh, you know, transparency and, and having a better opportunity for everyone. Yeah, so I, um, I first watched a documentary on Bitcoin sometime in early 2017, and I'm the same as all of these reasons. I thought this was cool, this is exciting. I started playing around with Ethereum and thought, wow, this is like I can have my own little magic internet money. And then all of a sudden this 
magic internet money went up in price heaps. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. I just escaped the system. I can now come live in Bali. And so unless you're a horrible person, what's the first thing that you want to do when something good happens to you? You want to tell everyone about it. <laughs> and so the only way I knew how to do that was to get on YouTube. And so we realized that there, exactly what I said before, Indonesia didn't have any of this information in their own language. And so why would I want the place that I've chosen to live, native people, to miss out on an opportunity because they didn't have the majority language of the internet. So I got lucky. I got in early because I saw a documentary in my language and then it worked out well for me and so I wanted to share that with other people. Okay, everyone. Hello. I'm Bruno. I'm a blockchain entrepreneur and... Thank you for everything that you put together, Michael. So first of all, welcome to Bali, guys, to Six and Gabor. Welcome to our uh, special crypto hub in the Thanks. world. So I agree with what you guys are saying, that here in Bali, especially, it's a lot about the technology. You're, you're not going to see all the BS that you are going to hear about in uh, Europe, in the States, or wherever it is. Here you really see a passion for the technology and the real enthusiasm in creating something that can have a social impact and can change the world. So I agree on this totally, because Bali right now is becoming a technological hub. You're gonna have people from all over the world that are moving here. You guys are a clear example that you moved here. And I can assure you that uh, in reality, there is a lot going on from the crypto space. Maybe you haven't seen it yet, but you are gonna see that here the community is very vibrant and there is a lot going on. We have so many kind of community that it can be technology, fashion, IT, social impact. You just name it and you're gonna find that there is a crypto community that is existing and is creating the basement for it. So my question for you guys is, uh, in which way do you see Polkadot contributing to the actual ecosystem and what kind of advantages you are gonna bring for the communities that are already existing and have been doing so much in the last years. Me, I'm here only for one year and I've seen like exploding. Everything here is just growing parabolic. So I'm wondering because we already have other layer one blockchain that are present here in Bali that are contributing with uh, event, grants, partnership. We have also a lot of uh, local layer one blockchain. Like we have Acta, we have Everscale, so we have a lot of project. So I'm wondering in which way Polkadot is going to contribute to what is existing right now and what you want to do. Thank you. Thank you for the welcoming and also for the question. So Polkadot focuses a lot on education. So one of the things we want to give to this community is a possibility to, to get education in blockchain, in technology, not just substrate and rust, because that's what Polkadot is built on, but also on how you can uh, communicate with other chains, with your project. We want to help those uh, projects, startups, companies, VCs, whoever, who want to stay connected with other chains and not just have your own local network. That's also partially education, but also uh, requires some support, some, some architectural help on how do you make this happen anyways. So, so the Polkadot Hub, which, which we initiated, wants to help with, with these questions. And of course, we want to bring together the community in some ways, just, uh, just as Anta mentioned in the uh, blockchain Bali Center, it's a perfect spot to come together. And it won't be just the Polkadot Hub, but many other projects. And we believe that, that the future is, uh, is working, if not, uh, not fully cross-chain, but, but most blockchains in some ways will communicate with each other, and already do, actually. If you look at Snowfork project, that's, that's a project that is already being implemented and it will create a bridge between Ethereum and Polkadot and that will be awesome because that bridge was not built and it will be a decentralized bridge. So we want to help people to, to get connected technologically and also with the know-hows and all the educational materials and, and the support we can provide. We can also mention funds 
I don't want to speak too much about this because a lot of people just, oh, there are funds. Um, yeah, we have, we have the Treasury funds, we have Web3 Foundation grants supporting substrate projects, we have the Child Bounty Program, which is supporting meetups and smaller events, and a few other ways how Polkadot can help you uh, to fund a good idea and, and make it happen uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem, which involves all, all the, the projects there. Uh, plus Kuzama, of course, we are not Kuzama ambassadors, but in some ways we are also helping the Kuzama ecosystem. So we have those two here. Hope this answers the question. Just introduce yourself to everybody and. I am Carol. I'm a small French woman from a small village <laughs> who is very curious, um, especially about funding. So you mentioned that you didn't really want to speak about it, but um, for the sake of transparency, I'm very much, you know, I come to these evenings because I want to educate myself. I'm very much on the outside, um, and I don't have enough time to spend on, the, on Google to do all my research. So I love to come to these evenings to hear the truth from the beautiful mouth of those wonderful horses that I have right in front of me. Um, where does all the money come from? From Rob. <laughs> magic is the internet magic money you know well it depends on the project but most of the times you see uh, VCs and uh, and some big companies government supporting financially these projects and there are some Bitcoin maximalists and and that's one of their strongest point that but Bitcoin was an actual decentralized Semi kind of depends how you understand Satoshi, but but still it, it was like an original community project and there was no big company or VC whatever behind it. Yeah, it, Polkadot was also funded by VCs, uh, but if you look at uh, how it works in the community, you see that people in Polkadot ecosystem are not really about the money. The price is not like going super well and it's not for uh, investing your money. It's inflationary, so that, that might even make you think that, oh, that's maybe not where I want to put the, put the money. And that's, that's not what DOT is for. DOT is not, not meant to be something you keep in the safe forever or, or uh, as long as the money goes up and you have a 5x. DOT is, is a utility coin and, and it is meant to, uh, meant to activate and, and, uh, and run the community, the funds and, and all the ecosystem. So yes, it has the price uh, and how this works is that we have a treasury and the unchained governance system where you can send a proposal and say, I have a project. I want to develop uh, a substrate project. I want to do this and that. This is the idea, clearly stated, uh, stated uh, with the details, what you need, when you do it, who is doing that, and so on. References, it's a long, uh, longer detailed document. And, and you can request the fund. Anyone can request those funds if you have the idea. That's fully open. Uh, but yeah, question if it goes through, if people see this makes sense, this actually helps the, the Polkadot ecosystem. If, if it helps, if it's a good idea and people believe you, then it will be voted in and you will uh, get your funds uh, and you can get through it. I think my question was where are your funds coming to give funding? Ah, okay, so the funds are coming from the blockchain. And that's the good thing. So, so it's not like you uh, send your bank account and give me 50,000 for, a, I don't know, a substrate module. You send an on-chain proposal. If it gets voted in, if it goes through, then you get DOT based on the price of the DOT at the specific time period. So, so you don't, don't get basically fiat money. You get DOT. An example, we organized uh, an event last year. It was a huge hackathon. Uh, and we requested $130,000 as funds, including the, the hackathon prizes. Everything is fully transparent. You can check on, uh, on the chain uh, how it went. 
uh, it was paid out in two details, uh, and yeah, everything was coming uh, coming to us in dot, and some companies, some service providers like our venue, they accepted dot, so we didn't even actually use fiat for most of the money. We just said, okay, venue, three days, amount X, here is, it, it, it's in dot, and we paid in dot. So that's, I think, super cool because I see many uh, projects using emails and bank transfers and doing this kind of uh, very old traditional way of, of money transfers where you can utilize the blockchain and be actually a user of, of, uh, of Web3. Hope this answers the question now. <laughs> essentially, essentially, all of the blockchains that exist, or all of the major projects that exist, they have their own internal treasury. And that was money that was, that was tokens from their project that was created when the project was created. And the reason that they sit there is because other people that hold those coins can vote to do exactly what Six just said. Say, yes, I like Carol's project. Let's give her some of the money from the treasury. So you would, so let's you ask the Polkadot Foundation for a grant and said, I want to create new virtual reality chairs. Um, can I have some money to do it? And they said, that's a great idea. We need chairs, virtual reality chairs. Here's some dot from the dot treasury. And that's how you get this funding. If the question is also about where the dot is coming from, yeah. that's, that's also the same answer like any other kind of money. That's belief. Like, I really like Nick Sobo's talk uh, about the history of money. He explains how money became a thing, the story of it. It's not different uh, in, in crypto. There is an image and value. There is, there is a, an image in people's mind that this worth something. And, and there is hopefully some backing of that. Most of the time, there is not actual much thing backing it. And that's why I believe that we need to utilize these systems, show them uh, that, that they are useful, and when people get implemented and see, oh, that's cool, I can utilize this dot or this coin to, to get some real service, to, to get a ticket on the train, or to, to have a faster transaction than MasterCard, because my experience is, if I do transactions in Polkadot, it's six seconds, that's fixed. That's a big value for me because it always goes through. When I pay with my bank card, I need a pin card and all this kind of stuff. The, the paper is slowly being printed out. I'm losing time with this, actually. So I, I value that, that there is this fix six seconds, and it always works. So, so this kind of values, the utility, I think that's, that's the key here. And yeah, belief. Yeah, mo most, po most crypto projects, when they were created, there was an allocation of the amount of tokens that were locked away in a treasury for funding things like this. And so the Polkadot Foundation, which is a foundation, it's not a company, controls, controls allocation of those tokens for grants. Yeah, and uh, also how DOT is becoming, like how you have more and more DOT, is uh, thanks to the validators. So not going too much into tech, you have all those computers over, over the uh, over the Polkadot network, the are validators. They are basically mining out the the chains or the blocks, and and whenever they get rewards, the reward is in DOT. It's a uh, if you if you oversimplify it in Bitcoin, it's a very similar way that you do some work and you get some bitcoins. But in case of Polkadot, it's the validation of the blocks and the transactions. So new dot is continuously basically coming out. The validators get these dots. And some parts of this dot is sent to the treasury. And the treasury has the potential to give those dots out to, to projects and to the community. If the dot is not used in the treasury, they are continuously burned. So everyone is incentivized to, to use those. Otherwise, you have like millions burning. They're destroyed. Yeah, yeah forever. So 
basically when we're talking about blockchain, it's quite easy to go very high level so that no one understands actually what, whatever is being discussed. That's why I really like that, Anta, you mentioned that the projects that you want to run here with the blockchain community are very concrete. So something that regular people could use, like students' education. Can you throw some examples at us and you know, talk in more detail about projects like that? Thank you. Okay, so uh, so we have a project of NFT chocolate. So this is like an, an NFT. We create an artwork, like a five artwork, uh, and every single artwork is minted by in, in NFTs. And then we sell it to the people who want to funding the farmers. So we're starting to selling it like in one artwork it, on NFTs. You buy the NFTs, and then you got... Uh, 0.001% of the company, and you also funding the farmer. You also get a share, like 30% of every single. You get you get a tree, a tree, a really exactly tree. I can bring you to your tree, because uh, we already plan 131 uh, chocolate tree in some place in Badung. So we created that, and then when you hold this NFT chocolate, you can go to uh, Badugo, there is a chocolate cafe near of Secret Garden. So you go there, use your NFTs as a member card. Uh, you got a discount, 10% discount, just to showing your NFT. And it's like that. It's, it's like an easy way to, to utilize the NFTs. Another one is we also uh, on a way to creating... It's, I, I think this is not a new use case of using uh, NFTs. This is like all way. But uh, we are introducing to every single even organizer in Bali about how to using NFT as a ticket. It's that like a ticket even. You know, when you have uh, like Metallica concerts of, or a lot of band concerts, a uh, long time ago where there is no digital ticket, you like collecting it, right? Uh, this is my ticket and everything. But when we go digital, something is missing. This digital is on their server, and when the platform is shut down, your ticket is gone. So this is what we can create NFT with. You know, when you create an NFT, the ticket will be formed as a token, and you can hold the token, and it, it will be forever in your wallet as long as not you are not transferring it. So, and in the event you have a collection, you can get, redeem your ticket, and you can give like a gimmick, and also it create a community. It can activate a community. For example, if you have a ticket, like your collection of every single concert of Metallica for five years, you will get meet up with, up with the Metallica band. In a band. It's, it's quite a good, good utilization. So this is like an easy way to creating a small project but getting impact. And we're introducing also this to your university. So they're creating like seminars, but the ticket is on NFTs. The certification is on NFTs. It's it's easy way to do that. So th this is uh, what I'm saying. It's really concrete and even it's easy to do. Can I share one more example? So I missed your name. What was your name, sorry? Diana. Diana. So this was the way that it made sense in my mind when I was learning about this to start with. Have you ever participated in any form of rewards program with a company before? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Anything you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was head of education of managers. I, okay. I'd better not. Okay, okay, okay. I'll give you two examples. When I was young, I used to get stamps on my Subway card when I would go to Subway, and you get the 10th one free. I would also, when I was a little bit older, would collect flight, flight miles from Virgin Airlines. And so I was a sucker. I was a sucker for it. I would pay $50 more for a flight, so I would go with Virgin Airlines instead of Qantas when I was flying out of Australia, so I would get Virgin points. And that would mean that I was a higher tier member, and it meant that I got a different drink or something like that when I went into the airport. So this is a way that they would keep you in their ecosystem, and they would keep you buying customer loyalty. Okay, now imagine those Virgin points were now equity in the company. And now imagine that you could take your Virgin points and you could trade them on an open market for subway stamps or from coins when I play Super Mario Brothers on my Nintendo or Bitcoin or DOT 
I can now take this equity or these rewards from a company and I can swap it on an open market. That's what, that's what cryptocurrencies are. And so it's the most simplest way because it's a system that we've been using in business already. But the only difference is now is that now Virgin, so I'll tell you what happened at the start of the pandemic, anyone that had Virgin Velocity points with Virgin Australia, when they were going through solvency problems, they cancelled everybody's points because the company got sold. So that would never happen in a cryptocurrency world because those points are not held by Virgin. They're held by you in your wallet and they have no access to them and you can transfer them on an open market, on an exchange like Uniswap. And so this is what cryptocurrencies are and it's a really simple way and it's, we, we overcomplicate things a lot sometimes. But the simplest way is to show that you have not only are they points for rewards, they could be rewards, but they are also equity in the company. And sometimes if you stake them, you might get given profits from the company as well. And that's what Six was talking about as well. Sometimes with DOT, there's rewards that are given. And some of those rewards go to the treasury and that funds other activities. So whether it's subway stamps or whether it's when you go to time zone and you get tickets out of the game when you're playing like playing like on the pinball machine and you get tickets and you can go swap it for a plushie at the end. All of these digital points and reward systems are now transferable, exchangeable, and a form of equity in the project that you got them from. And they're money. They're cryptocurrencies. Yeah, and uh, maybe I will add um, something that this is, this is the beauty of blockchain and cryptocurrency and NFTs. And uh, most of them is like, uh, when we go like two years before, three years before, you know, all the focus is on cryptocurrency, how to create the money of it. But the one thing is missing is about the blockchain. Mm. Blockchain is like the next level of digital transformation. For first one, digital transformation, everyone create a website. And then the second one, you have a website. Okay, I have a website. And now uh, it's really expensive to have all the system in on my server. I want to walk everywhere. Then you have cloud. But the problem of cloud computing is every data is on the cloud. Everyone can access it. It's like, it's everywhere. It can be, ha it can be hacked. It'd be hacked. The next question, how to create the data protection and data privacy. This is how blockchain will be the beautiful solution to do that. So I, I always say, when, when I have a presentation to the government, I always say that you don't, you don't see the blockchain only about cryptocurrency. Blockchain is about protecting your data. How do you, like you create a, like what Martin do on Kilt, like creating like uh, ID on a blockchain, like uh, zero proof, blockchain proof, uh, zero proof knowledge uh, blockchain. So this is, this is like, it will be used by everyone and can be used everywhere. And with this technology, uh, we can prevent something bad happening for the data privacy and data protection. So this is what blockchain is good with. Thank you for your question. Thank you. We'll have one more. Or two more. Okay, two more questions, and then we'll wrap up for this evening. Thank you. Hi, guys. My name is Melissa Ohm, the other Melissa. Um, this question is for the Polkadot guys. So uh, following up with uh, what uh, Bruno was saying, over the past year, we've built a really robust uh, blockchain community. Well, for us, at least, it feels robust. Maybe when you came on your on your quick trip, you're like, oh, all these people with blockchain, but nothing's happening. But um, there's actually a lot of things that have been um, coming together over the last year, especially after Crypto Week Bali, which is the event that basically the community over here just got together and put together in like four weeks, especially Bruno, who's sitting on that corner, who worked like a madless, a headless chicken to try and, and bring everybody together. And uh, there's so many resources and talent and people who are, um, you know, just either enthusiasts in the space or, uh, you know, we came together with this idea of, uh, maybe you've heard it, of the, of the Silicon Valley. Um, which was a concept that came up out of all of the people that were kind of uh, throwing ideas back and forth on how do we apply blockchain and crypto concepts into something more tangible. And we decided that a way for our Bali community uh, to kind of differentiate itself from many other places was to focus on social impact projects or projects that were trying to change um, you know, people's lives. So when Gab was talking about, uh, Gab's your name, right? Gabo? No, yeah, yeah, your name. Yeah, you mentioned something about how when you came, people were not just talking about tokens and you know 100x, but um, that 
the draw for you was seeing the conversations and the collaborations and how people were talking about real, real applications of blockchain, I guess. So my very specific question with that context is, um, for Polkadot specifically, why is that a grab? Is there, is there some sort of like, from your experience as an ambassador of Polkadot, is there an actual interest in building projects that are, or in supporting projects or an ecosystem that is trying to apply to real world problems? Or like, tell me a little bit more about just what, what is it, if that was a hook for you guys to stick around, uh, why was it a hook? Mm -hmm. Sure. So it was, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the, the community we saw uh, has a lot of talents here. Uh, but when I said that that some kind of events are missing, it was focusing on the technical events, like hackathons. You didn't really have hackathons, as far as I know, in the last couple of years. Maybe maybe, maybe one or two you had? Yeah, just a couple. I mean, we, we had couple. ICP who ran a... Yeah, like in Europe... Yeah, in Europe, you ha always have right. hackathons going on right, and right. Mm -hmm. uh, many ecosystems. And we were like, okay, well, why, why don't you have... Yeah these events going on, uh, the more technical ones, because yeah, we see that there are uh, the no non-tech events going on. But, uh, but you know all these people who are developers, so many developers here, they want to get challenged, they want to get into the, into the hacking and get more skills and know each other and, and do some cool stuff. So, so that's why education uh, is a key focus for us, and also we haven't spoken too much about hackathons because it's a little bit maybe a, a farther uh, point. We we have plans for meetups first to explain what Polkadot, Substreet, Inc., and and the, and the basic things are. Then we can uh, transfer to to more technical events. We actually already have the the plans with the Blockchain Bali Center and Republic Rupia for a two months. Uh, meetup series with the uh, block talk, and and this will help people understand what what this whole thing is, and then we can get into the more tech stuff. Um, why Bali and why this community is because we see this region is coming up, and there are more people starting their project. There are a lot of talents, and and it's very different from the Western part of the world right now where, where everyone wants the axis and, oh, I want to have more money out of this and how can I build the next multi-millionaire Silicon Valley Web3 project? And when we came here, we meet those guys and, oh, people are talking about use cases, how we can make something cool, how we can create real thing. Uh, that's how we met Melissa. And basically you also, because we met you uh, in, in the previous meetup. Uh, and, uh, right. and I think Sorry, let me just rephrase a little bit. So yeah. is there a particular area or industry of development that through these hackathons, uh, you know, Polkadot is interested in developing more specifically? Like, is there a specific sort of, you know, you're like, oh, um, I'm not, I mean, I don't want to go into the, um, not necessarily the um, like DeFi, but is there a particular area that Polkadot has an interest in terms of use cases of developing? Is there something that you know from you know being there and being an ambassador that there's like a, a more of an interest in investing or you know working towards a particular sort of subject? I would say yeah. that's more the question. Yeah, if, if there would be a, like a main uh, focus here, that's NFTs and utilizing okay. NFTs. If we call NFT an industry, well, we might already. Uh, be able to that call, was, call yeah. that uh, as an industry. Uh, I think we will we will mostly focus on that. Yeah. We you know uh, researching what's going on and what makes sense. So far, NFTs are looking something really strong. In Europe, we focus a little bit on metaverse and and Web3 adoption uh, in other ways. So yeah, NFTs. Cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys very much for the last question. Um, my name is Nick. I'm co-founder of Krypton Studio Company. We provide full cycle of custom development services. We are mostly focused on public blockchains, but we are going to try more. We are working with Ethereum and so on, VM-based blockchains, but we are going to try Polkadot 
too. So this evening was really, really nice for us to, to gain more, more uh, to gain opportunity to get more information about it, and maybe some contacts of you as ambassadors, guys. I have one question about Blockchain Center to you, Anta. Um, you have mentioned that uh, you have something uh, like uh, incub you are going to build like an uh, inc incubator for startups there. For um, So we have worked a lot with such kind of centers all around the globe in educational way mostly. Yeah, with uh, in Kazakhstan, in MENA region and, and so on. Um, and I have one question. Do you have an idea what kind of requirements you will have to this kind of startups to, to incubate them. Okay. Uh, yes, mostly it's about utilizing the NFT, the technology of blockchain. Most of them is like that. So we are trying to finding how we match together. There is a real use case and how to like uh, transforming it to blockchain. So this is what we are trying to find out. So so it would be like uh, like web to uh, web to I mean um, something sphere yeah to to transparent it yes. in web three. Yes. So for example, there is uh, quite a lot of problem. You know, Indonesia uh, is a really big country. We have a lot of area that covers, and also the government is everywhere and. We are in Bali, it's like, we are not the central government, we are in the east government, uh, and in, in Bali, we, there's a lot of problems. And also in Bali, there's the government in Bali, there is a two government in Bali, the centralized government and the central government. So if you don't know that a village in Bali, there is a decentralized government. It's not controlled by central government of Indonesia, even with their economic, it's different. If you go everywhere, you have a temple, it's a big one, it's called Pura Desa. It's controlled by the decentralized government. It, it's come from a long, long time ago, like a thousand years ago, it's still happening here. So uh, these two government has their own problem. If you want to seek everything, you like talking with the local and finding out other problem, uh, in my eyes, blockchain can be the solution for most of them. So this is why I'm saying that if you want to see the, the, the real use case, you learn about everything is here. Because there's a lot of things. A lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. I think we're going to wrap up for this evening. Um, if you want to continue the conversation, we're going to hang around for a little bit. So you're more than welcome to come and approach anyone else on the panel. Um, just a shout out. Make sure you're following Polkadot and the everything that the boys are doing. Anta and the Bali Blockchain Center, and also now with the Republic DAO. If you want to find us, you'll find us on Telegram, Discord, YouTube, and Twitter under Republic DAO. Um, and I also have a QR code that you can come and scan on my phone if you want access to all of these things. We would love to have you come and get involved in our community, especially on Discord. We already have nearly 11,000 people in our Discord, but they're all Indonesian speaking, but we've made the space now for non-Indonesian speakers. Come get involved because we want to plug the foreign community into the local community, into the Bali Blockchain Center, and we really give thanks to everybody who's gotten involved. And lastly, a big shout out to Rob, because I think it was his 350 something episode yeah, tonight. 352. And thank you to everyone who's come out tonight. We really appreciate you, all 300 of you. It's been awesome. Um, and we sign off for this evening. Thank you, everybody.